Hey everybody, it's Christine, and I wanted to take a little time to show you how I put together the album that I made at the Heidi Swap workshop a couple weeks ago. Um, I ended up making another one for a friend the other day, and so I wanted to just show you how easily that comes together. So what you can see is I've got my envelopes, and it doesn't matter what size as long as they're all the same, but they're all stacked up the exact same way with the flap sticking out the exact same way. And I put the adhesive, then onto the flap and put the other envelope on top of it. So the side that doesn't have a flap onto the top of it. So watch right here, okay? It's got the adhesive and I'm adhering the flap to the non-flap side. And then I just keep doing that for as many envelopes as you want. So in this case, I have 10. So slow that down, take a second look. It's not complicated at all. Once you get it down, you've got it. But it really helps if you stack up your envelopes all so that they're, the flaps are in the exact same spot in your stack so you're just pulling one off of another. And you can see, really, you just put the adhesive on the top of the flap and then stack them back up how they were, and it all comes together. Now, what this does is it creates a book, okay, with pockets. So that's fantastic. And that creates the book part of your mini album. Um, again, you can use whatever size envelopes as long as they're all the same. And, you know, you may have to trim up your pictures or whatever. I used regular A2 size envelopes in this case. One thing that Heidi did point out in the workshop is that the envelopes with the triangular flap are better than the ones with the rectangular curved flap because they're just easier to put things into. Um, I don't think it makes a dramatic difference, but she did point out that tip. So I think that was a really helpful one. And as I was making this album for my friend, I definitely considered that. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I continue to put it together and how I decorate the whole thing. I am using some patterned paper from the nautical patterned paper pad from Paper House Productions. The reason I opted for this one and all that beautiful blue foil is because I'm doing an album about a little baby's baptism. And so I wanted kind of a watery feel to it. Um, and I thought a nautical paper pad that would work. I didn't really feel like going down the beach route. I felt like that was, I don't know, it just didn't fit quite right. So this one was perfect. And so I'm gonna really pull in these blue foils a lot. In fact, that's gonna be the primary, the blue foils and then that lighter blue that you see there. What I'm doing is securing it now, um, securing a patterned paper onto my chipboard cover. And you can see I put the adhesive onto my paper because I just, adhesive and chipboard often gets really teary. And so I didn't want to run into that. Now, sometimes it tears with patterned paper too. There, obviously it's not a foolproof, it's paper. <laughs> um, but I feel like you up your chances if you go with the patterned paper versus chipboard. Chipboard just likes to rip apart, um, which is weird because it's such a thick material, but whatever. <laughs> um, for whatever reason, that happens. So you can see I am just assembling, I'm just adding the patterned paper right onto it. And that's going to be the same patterned paper for my front and my back cover. And then I will secure it all together. You can also see I'm just trimming it off. I'm not doing any, there's nothing fancy here. No fancy tools. You've got envelopes, patterned paper, chipboard. Yes, I used fancier chipboard, but you could totally just use a cereal box on this if you wanted to. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is create my binding to put the two together. And this is going to have to be kind of a personal decision. How wide do you want it to be? Um, if you want it to overlap a lot on your covers or if you just want it a little bit. So that's something you're going to have to just kind of play with. I cut bigger than I expected to actually want it to be. So that way I could trim it down and make it smaller. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and add my envelopes in. And I'm going to do secure my covers or my cover first and then add the binding. Um, I don't know if, I don't really remember what we did in the workshop, if we did it in a specific order, but to me, this was logical. Um, so I went that way. So I'm doing, I did the front cover and now I'm doing the back cover. And you can see on the back cover, I am just adding that flap on, okay? I'm not gluing the whole thing down and I will just cover that flap up with patterned paper later. Now, one step I did mess up here that I would definitely recommend is if you want patterned paper on the inside of your covers, do that first. I made up for it later. Um, I just 
fixed things. <laughs> but we, it definitely, you don't want to miss that step. So I did miss it and I had to kind of pull things up and make some adjustments accordingly. Now with your binding, she had us kind of bend it. So it was almost a rounded binding because the whole thing will expand as you add pattern papers to it and add pictures and stuff. So you don't want it to be super tight. Um, and so that gives it a little bit of flex. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and start decorating. And I'm not going to make you sit through that whole thing, but I am going to show you what I did to cover all my envelopes. Now, you can leave the envelopes as they are. They, they're white. I mean, that goes with everything. But I wanted to add some pattern paper to all of mine. So I just cut out a template from my envelope. So I cut out basically the flat part. And then I just cut out patterned papers and trim out that triangle. Now you can trim it out just holding it like I'm doing, or you can also trace it and cut it out. Totally personal preference. I did both. Um, I actually ended up finding that I thought the tracing way, I don't know, was more enjoyable, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if it was faster, it wasn't any more accurate, etc. I just, that was my preferred approach. The also thing, the other thing I want to point out is that if you have some patterned paper that you want to use that perhaps is too short, like the one I just used, you can add some patterned paper on the side. So add like a little strip down the side and it will still work. So don't let that throw you off. Like I was, I was at the end of this paper pad. So I literally was working on fumes here and I had to make things stretch. So if I didn't have quite enough to make it work for covering up my envelope, then I cut it a little shorter and just added a little strip of my leftovers on there later. These will all come together to make the pages look extra special nice and make that pocket extra special nice. And I'm just using my Easy Runner Grand to put the whole thing together. So here you can see, see how that just adds in that nice color and everything. And so I'm just making sure that as they go, I rotate my patterned papers. I don't have all the same ones. If I had all the same ones, it wouldn't be a big deal. But um, I don't have all the same ones, so I'm rotating through as I put them on. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to add some cardstock. And I'm just going to add the same exact blue cardstock to the right-hand side of each page. This is going to be the backing for my photos that I add. Again, you could totally just leave it how it is. My concern on this one particularly was that the envelope, um, the sticky stuff of the envelope, I didn't know if that would affect the picture at all. And I just didn't want to run that risk. So I covered it up with acid-free cardstock so I knew that it would be okay. Um, you know, again, it's, it's not a huge deal. So just use your own what you're going for on that okay so here's my final product um you can see i added in some crosses and all the pictures and just a very simple but pretty baptism album so thank you so much for joining me be sure to check out my video before this for more details on this project and i will see you again next time